Which one of these grinders is the one for you? Today, we're gonna take a look and we'll find out. Predominantly kind of focus in on the Varia VS3 because I've not yet done a review on it. But if you're interested in the other grinders, I do have videos on each of them, which I will link above and below so that you can follow along. If you wouldn't mind taking a second hitting the like and the subscribe, that would be fantastic. This is not my full-time job. I, 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 in fact, I don't make any money from this. I put it back all into the channel and then some from my own pocket. I have a full-time job outside of this. So all the support with likes and subscribes and shares, all of that helps more than you know. Uh, thank you so much and let's continue on. Here we have the Fellow Opus, the Lego Mini, Varia VS3, which is what we're gonna focus on today, the Barazza Encore ESP, and the Turin SD40. Now, if I were to test all of these on camera for you today, this video would be ridiculously long. So I will be testing these head to head just because I think they're the most comparable on the table for, as far as price point goes and everything else, but we'll be talking about everything. Over here, the Fellow Opus. This is the most recent released grinder from Fellow, and it is it is marketed as a do-it-all grinder. This is 199 US dollars. Conical burrs inside that rotate at 350 RPM. The retention is not great, but again, we have a pretty cheap price point. It excels really well at filter, and it has 50 micron adjustment steps, which is pretty decent. Uh, they have a micro adjustment inside, which is a little bit more complex. Right here, we have the Lago Mini, and it has a roughly same size burr set inside of it. It rotates closer to 220 RPM, as per the readings on my tachometer. It's incredibly small, really compact, and fits really well anywhere. But it is connected to kind of a power brick. I have an adapter on the end because I had this in the States, and the motor's gonna be just fine. Now with the Varia, the same can be said. It has a big power block. It's not the same as that one, though if you wanted to source a different power block, you can. You can use the same one that the Mini has, which is a little less obtrusive than the big one that comes with the Varia on the table. This one's actually on loan from my friend Rob at A Matter of Concrete. He'll be one of the EU distributors for this grinder and rotates at about 165 RPM. So the slowest one by, by a pretty decent margin on the table and it retails at 299 US dollars. Both these right here are stepless, meaning you have infinite capability with your grind adjustment. There is no tick stoppage point. You can twist until whenever. Over here we have the Encore ESP, $199 price point. So this and the Opus are the cheapest marketed on the table. This one I have the single hopper doser on it, which is a separate expense, you do have a plastic hopper that comes with it. It has a really unique dialing system where the first 20 dots here are really fine micro adjustments of around 18 micron burr movement. And then as you pass 21, it goes to around 90 microns of burr movement. So you can really optimize the range for espresso without really getting too confused. Uh, and then you go up to filter coffee. Then we move over here to the Turin SD40. I believe I saw this was on sale on Espresso Outlet for like $159 current something outrageous, don't quote me on that price, but now this one is heavily stepped. There are people who have modded it to make it stepless, but just know that you will be held back by steps similar to the Opus here. Thus far, my thoughts on these is the difference between Espresso on this, this, the Legom, and the Fellow, like very similar. I would say probably these two have the most balanced Espressos on the table, but all, I mean, that's getting really, really nitpicky. They're all gonna give you really nice balanced shots. For the Light Roast Aficionados, I think you're probably gonna lean more towards the Lago Mini. Now, when it comes to filter coffee, the Lago Mini is definitely the best out of these, these options on the table. Then it's pretty close between the Encore and the Opus, and then you have the SD40. Because the price point on these two are the closest, I believe this is 349 US dollars, and this is 299, and because these are both stepless, and they have lower RPMs, 350, uh, 550, 550. Because of that, they're gonna produce a little bit more similar style coffees. Now the burr sets are quite different, but anyway, we're gonna do these for the taste tests. All right, it's time. Oh, I haven't clapped. All right, we have them all brewed up, and I this time I've done three and three. Um, so the ones with ink on the bottom are the Option O, and the ones with nothing on the bottom is the Varia VS3. Obviously, same coffee. It's a lightly washed Kenya from Coffee Collective. Obviously, with darker coffees, they're gonna perform pretty well. There's a much wider margin of error with, uh, with those than with these. You raise me up. Strong when I am on your shoulders. 
You raise me up to more than I can be. Okay, so we're about to do some slurping. So if you have misophonia and if you don't like that, a little trigger warning, you can skip ahead. But I'm gonna do some slurpy slurps and we're gonna see, you know, what's what's the dealio. And now, skip. You're still watching, you have misophonia. You're a silly goose. The ones in the front, to me, felt like they were more dull. The ones in the back were my preference. So let's see what we got going on here. Varia, Varia, Varia. This one actually drained faster and had a less muddy bed, which would make you think it was the one with the crisper acidity. Now we're gonna test out espresso. That make me crazy. That make me crazy. All right, so we're within a half a degree of each other, so I think it's high time to taste. Varia. This, by the way, is with the Moonshine Burrs. This is a really lightly roasted, naturally processed Ethiopia. I think the fruits come out a bit more with the Varia, and I think the florals come out a bit more with the Lagom Nini. Um, but very comparable shots. I think the difference um, is is very is very minute. And so um, both both very enjoyable though. Like honestly, very very good shots. And I'm gonna I'm already over caffeinated, but yeah, this has much more stone fruit. This one's more like rose. They're very easy to dial in because they're both stepless. Uh, but again, they're more expensive. So let's kind of go over pros and cons of all of them uh, before we finish and kind of what I would recommend depending on your situation. We see with the VS3 that um, it does a great job with both filter and espresso. It does a fantastic job actually. And I think a lot of that is the, is the fact that it's a 165 RPM, so very low. But something to note, if you were in the market, and this sounds good to you, I've seen lots of posts on Reddit of people whose motors have essentially failed them. Many of these speculate that the motor probably wasn't designed super well for the plastic gearbox that's inside of this. Um, and some people might say, well, there's a plastic gearbox in the Brazza Sette. Yes, but that was specifically created so that you would protect the motor. And I've read somewhere that Varia has responded and said they're working on a new motor, but it does kind of ask the question, why, why was this not known before release? Um, stress testing should really reveal a lot of that issues and maybe there should be a recall or something but um, what I know is the taste off of this is nice um, and it's it's a it's a very affordable grinder for an all-around all-purpose grinder but that kind of scares me and you know a newer a newish company a brand new grinder on the market I don't know that that for me is a little scary power brick on top of that awful retention uh, as you can see here there's stuff kind of everywhere you need to use bellows I'm not a big fan of kind of the silicon bellows that come the bellows that I use and prefer is this and it tends to fit in like everything it fits in this as well but of course it's very ugly and using a bellows with a cup this shallow is going to cause a lot of spray everywhere so even if you knock out the grounds it tends to spray out over it the legome has arguably even worse retention and I use this ugly ugly, ugly, ugly bellows on it as well. See all that coming out? So you're gonna have retention with both and you have really slow grinding with both. Now I'm not gonna go through and just grind with this grinder. You've seen in other uh, other uh, videos like Kyle Rosell's for instance, showing you how slowly this grinds. They're both similar in grind speed. This is a bit faster. When it comes to filter grinding, um, I think his testing showed that this was 10 seconds faster than this. And then I, I, I know for a fact that this grinds around 40 to 50 seconds for espresso. Very slow because that really low RPM. Um, this is at 199 and one of the biggest the biggest benefits of it, even though it's not stepless, what makes up for it, in my opinion, is the customer service at Barazza. Now, they are notorious for wanting your grinder to last forever. I have friends who have 10-year-old encores because when something happens, they'll reach out, Barazza will send them replacements, bada bing, bada boom, good to go. So you are backed with proven customer service on the back end with Barazza. They have a proven background, a proven history. The SD40 has a powerful motor at 550 RPM, which I think is the biggest downside is that 550. I wish it was down to about 200 and I really think it would smoke everything on the table. If this was stepless with a lower RPM, I think this would probably be the best bet on the table for those of us who are really nerdy. The Opus made by, you know, the notorious fellow made that the kettle that we all think of when we think of a pour over kettle. Their Ode is a fantastic option that I absolutely adore. I've made a few videos with those. This though, it's kind of an unproven grinder. I don't know the longevity of it. Same with the SD40, honestly, same with the Varia and somewhat same with the Lagome. I've seen some issues with that as 
as well. But this has issues with retention. Uh, it has some difficulties on dialing in the espresso with the micro adjustments. Um, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but it's definitely not as easy as, you know, this or stepless, right? The Lagome uh, is pretty expensive in, in comparison to these others. Um, I haven't looked at pricing recently, but I heard someone say that uh, if you get it from a distributor in the US, they're closer to 500 US dollars. Honestly, I don't think it's worth 500 US dollars. I think it's worth 349, and I think that would be kind of the top out price in order to be a fellow owed competitor. I love how compact it is. I'm not a huge fan of the power brick, but it's a sacrifice I'm, I'm, I'm happy to make. Just to bring it all together, if you are a beginner and you want an all purpose grinder, what should you get? My recommendation, what makes sense to me when I look at it objectively, what makes sense to me is the Bratza Encore ESP. I think it's just easy. It, it it does come stock with a hopper, not with a single dose one, so apologies there. So you're able to store beans if that's something you want to do. When we start looking at budget, currently the SD40 is, at, is the cheapest on the table, if the price I saw was correct, at 159. You do have good support with Joe Kolb at Espresso Outlet, and I know that the other resellers around the world have some pretty good reputations with them as well. When you're a little bit more advanced and you're more intense about taste, this one kind of falls short unless you can get it at a really good price. If you are an advanced person, you have a little extra cash, I think the Legome is an awesome option. I, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, it, it's not the greatest tasting on either ends of the spectrum, but it gives you complete control over both ends. You need a slow feeder or you need to just slowly feed the coffee if it's really light and you're really tight. And I know many people are like, no, they fixed that. The fix was a more powerful brick, which I did did get, and even with that, there are still some stalling issues. I don't see it being worth 500 US dollars, so that can be an issue. Opus, I think, is a fantastic option for people who are willing to get in and do the micro adjustments, because then you have super granular precision all the way to cold brew, which I think is fantastic. I just think you have to kind of, you kind of have to want it. The Varia, again, I'm hesitant to recommend it. I'll be honest, it has stalled for me. Granted, it doesn't happen often. It's similar to like the EG1 in my EG1 video. These three have never had stall. There you have it. There is as condensed of a version of a comparison and a Varia review that I can do because I'm trying my best to give you as good of information as possible. I didn't want to declare a specific winner, even though I tried to kind of guide you through what might be good for you. Of course, take all everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. Of course, I have my own biases and how I enjoy tasting coffees, and I've not been shy about that. If you would take a moment, hit the like, hit the subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my Patreon below so I can continue to acquire gear without having to rely on handoffs, though I still do because I don't make enough. But that would be fantastic. And um, other than that, I hope that you brew yourself a tasty cup of coffee like I have here. And cheers.